And what is up everyone, Steven here. One of the things I got for Christmas was a license to Vegas Pro 15. Now, you're probably thinking a couple things right now. First of all, right, Christmas was a while ago. I'm a bit late making this video. Unfortunately, it has taken a bit of time to make this or more to get around to making this. But regardless, it turned out to be a good thing because fairly recently I've come across a few other usability issues that I will be talking about later in the video. If you are mainly interested in those, there are some time codes in the description so you can just jump to whatever part is interesting. But, you know, if you have time, I do recommend you stick around for the whole thing. The other thing you might be thinking is, hey, Vegas Pro 15 is not the latest version. Vegas Pro 16 was the one that was released last year. So why are you getting an older version? And the answer is very simple. It was available in a Humble Bundle, which is a whole lot cheaper than buying a several hundred dollar license for it outright. Speaking of, uh, that Humble Bundle that I got Vegas Pro 15 through is actually back, which is awesome because that means all y'all, if you're interested in Vegas Pro 15, you can get it and a bunch of other software that you may or may not use for 25 bucks through Humble Bundle. Uh, if I've done my math correctly, the bundle is available through June 4th of 2019. So if it's before then and you're interested, there's a link in the description. I highly recommend you check it out because it's probably one of the best deals you'll find on a good professional video editor. Anyway, onto the meat of the video. See, one of the things that was advertised with Vegas Pro 15 is faster render times, in particular when you're using the GPU to render the video. Now, to me, that sounds like the perfect excuse to run some tests and discuss the results. Of course, uh, neither of the versions that I'm testing is the latest version, so the relevance to this video is it's mainly academic, and except when the Humble Bundle is going on, but regardless, I thought it was interesting, and it may still have some relevance. After all, if you are still on version 14, you poor soul, these numbers are likely with the minimum improvement that you're going to get if you were to upgrade to Vegas Pro 16. But before we get to the actual data, I think it's important to talk about the testing methodology that I used, which was specifically crafted to address a few issues that I've seen with some other video comparisons on YouTube. First of all, I've seen some comparisons that just put a video clip in Vegas Pro and then export it, which, you know, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world, but it's not super realistic. If that's all you're doing, you're probably not going to take the time to open up Vegas Pro when there are much simpler programs like Handbrake that are specifically designed for just doing a straight transcode. If you are taking the time to open up Vegas, it's probably because you're actually going to do some edits, which is what I'm going to do here. So all of the videos that I've tested for this video are video projects that I myself have edited in Vegas Pro 14 and then exported and uploaded to YouTube on this or another channel. So if you are curious about any of these projects, all of the links to those videos will be in the description. You can have a look and kind of get an idea what sort of edits I did. The second, I did see a video where they just opened up both programs, 14 and 15, side by side, and they exported them at the same time. Now, this actually is a terrible test because now you're making those two versions compete with each other for system resources, and whichever one happens to get in with a higher priority or get in first is going to have an advantage. So to address this, I just didn't do that. <laughs> I rendered them separately on their own, where the one that I was testing was the only Vegas Pro program that I had open. I also did try to limit the other programs that I had running in the background. So the only program windows that I had up were Task Manager, a couple file explorers, and the Vegas Pro, whichever version I was testing at the time. I did also leave all of my standard background programs running, uh, but I did notice once that Backblaze had started doing some stuff and introducing quite a bit of load, so when I noticed that, I threw out that test result, disabled Backblaze, and reran it to make sure that we weren't getting any uh, confounding variables introduced. And another methodology point, uh, one of the things that they introduced with Vegas Pro 15 is an option to use the graphics card to accelerate the rendering process. In my case, I have an NVIDIA card, so it shows up as NVIDIA NVENC, that's the NVIDIA hardware encoder, which you will find on just about any NVIDIA card that's been made in the last several years. From looking online, it looks like it also supports Intel's QuickSync if you have Intel integrated graphics, but I don't believe they have an equivalent for AMD, so unfortunately, you're probably not gonna be able to leverage this. 
and of course all of the tests that I'm going to show that we're using the NVIDIA encoder method is going to be heavily hardware dependent, right? QuickSync will probably not perform the same. In fact, I can almost guarantee that it will not perform the same. And if you have a different NVIDIA card, you know, who knows how it'll perform. All of these tests were run on my desktop. There are full specs in the description, but the important parts are a Ryzen 5 1600X stock speeds, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, GTX 1060 6 gig, and for all the project files and export locations, I was putting those on a 2 terabyte Samsung SpinPoint T4, which is a 5400 RPM desktop hard drive. First, uh, two videos from my main channel. There was the second movement of a Mendelssohn organ sonata, and my Star Wars themed edit of What Does the Fox Say? Both of these projects are at 1080p and 29.97 FPS. I used these render settings for the tests, and in both cases, version 15 uh, handily beats version 14, and even more so when we use the GPU. The final size of the rendered video is also a bit smaller and slightly different still when using the GPU encoding option. Second up, we have a single video from my gaming channel, as it was the only one from my gaming channel that I edited in Vegas Pro 14. It's also the longest highest resolution and highest frame rate project I tested. So it's 1440p and 60 FPS. So I had to use some different render settings. And of course, because of that, Vegas Pro 14 took over two hours to render, which is just tragic and allows version 15 to just destroy it and even more so when using the GPU. The file size is also a lot smaller but nowhere near as much smaller as it was on the render times. And lastly, I tested three videos from my tech channel, all at 1080p and 30fps, rendered using these settings. And across the board, we see similar gains as on the music channel videos, both when it comes to render times and when it comes to file size. Now, to aggregate these scores and put them all side by side, I took the render time and divided it by the project length, resulting in a little a number that I'm going to call render ratio. It's basically how many seconds it took on average to render one second of video. In other words, a value of one means that it rendered roughly in real time. This way of calculating it does put the gaming video at a disadvantage, as a second of video it for it has twice as many frames as any other project. Although, I mean, it was already going to be an outlier due to its high resolution. So besides the gaming video, the slowest project to render was the SSD unboxing. It seemed weird at first, but it does kind of make sense. This project involved two 1080p video streams running at the same time. That's quite computationally intensive. Now, the fastest video to render was my SSD review, which also makes sense. Most of the video was just static graphs and other images, which is kind of like how this video is going to be. Another aggregate score would be the percent of render time compared to version 14. In other words, 100% is the time that it took version 14 to render each project. Using this method, we can see that most of the time 15 renders in about 80% of the time, and with the NVIDIA encoder, only 20 to 30% of the time. The gaming video is again the outlier, enjoying a much larger performance improvement than the others. File sizes were generally about 80% of what they were on version 14, with less variance than render times. I don't really know why the Star Wars parody had so little improvement, but it doesn't really make much difference to me. One thing that I discovered after running all these tests was that when I was editing a video that was recorded with OBS, it would frequently crash. Like, consistently, frequently crash. For no apparent reason. I did find a fix though, so if you are experiencing similar issues, try this. Go up to the top, select Options, Shift click preferences. This will open it with the internal tab. Select that tab, search for SO4, and change the value of enable so far compound, etc., etc., from true to false. Click OK, restart Vegas, and see if it's still an issue. So, briefly, what this does is it just disables the new decoder that Vegas Pro brought for decoding video. It tells it to use the old decoder instead of the new one, which in my experience is a lot more stable. Now, since it was one thing that is new in Vegas Pro 15, I was uh, a bit afraid that it might negate the performance gains that I had already tested, but it turns out it didn't. I reran these tests on my What Does the Fox Say parody, and 
it only made it render a few seconds slower. It's close enough that I can't really be sure if that's actually a performance penalty or if it's just random sampling variation. Now, even more recently, I've come across an issue that I haven't been able to find a fix for. On longer projects, it seems like the audio likes to drift from the video. In my experience, it seems to drift after about 15 minutes and by five frames, and it seems to happen instantly. Not like it's slowly drifting away, but like about 15 minutes in, suddenly it's five frames off. And then it happens again 15 minutes later. In my case, it was video that was shot on an iPhone 6S and audio that was recorded in Audacity. Now it gets even weirder because the video drifted from its own audio track by the same margin and it still claimed to end at the same time. I did try adjusting the project frame rate to see if that would affect it, but moving it above or below the source frame rate didn't actually seem to have an impact on it. It still drifted the same direction and at least roughly the same amount. I'm kind of baffled by this, so do let me know if you have any ideas in the comments down below. But setting that aside and just looking at the performance, I'm pretty confident in saying that, at least on my system, Fix Pro 15 is consistently faster at rendering videos than 14 was and more efficient at compressing the rendered video. Though I have to say, I'm not entirely sure how useful the NVIDIA encoder is in this case. The performance improvement makes it seem like a no-brainer, but from what I hear, the NVIDIA encoder is not as high quality as CPU encoding. That may have changed in more recent years, but that's what I've heard. And to be fair, I haven't actually been able to see a difference, but keep in mind that the video files that I'm working with have already either been compressed by my phone or by OBS, which if I'm recording in OBS, I'm probably using the NVIDIA encoder already. I suspect if there is a difference, you're more likely to see it if you have a higher quality camera. So I do recommend if you have such a camera, do some tests on your own and see if you can see a quality difference. And if you don't, then maybe the NVIDIA encoder is perfect for you. If you do see a difference, you might only find the NVIDIA encoder is useful for draft renders, and that for the final one, you want to use the CPU. But regardless, hopefully all this has been helpful. Uh, do let me know what you think in the comments down below, and of course, I'll figuratively see you in the next one.